The mask is part two. Here we go. What we've done is pre-prepared a twist billet, which you should now know from part one, if you haven't watched that. To look up here somewhere if I can work out how to do it. If not, there'll be a link below. And look how we did these basic, as we're calling them, patterns. So that's a basic twist. And we've got an offset layer, flat laminate which what we're going to do is turn this into an explosion and that'll be the basics of mosaics so we'll take this piece first forge it on the 45 which is going to create this star and then we'll look at the basics of putting things together in a tessellated pattern I believe is the correct name for it basically means that if you use uh, certain shapes they will fit together by flipping them along the sides and along the edges and that's what we want to be able to create mosaic so to forging we go somewhere if you can see it in there can you see yeah, there we go we roll that pattern over onto the corner now we've got these fans coming out from here Four bits of that. Wait a minute. Someone said last time that I didn't use a big enough knife. So, hiya. It's big enough for you. Now obviously, we're working with plasticine, so. You're going to get a bit of smudging going on. You can still see what's going on inside. Focus on it. At the end of the day, this is all just about proving how things work. So, what we need to do is orientate these now in the way it's going to give us what we want. It should be something like that. going to give us our star with our ripples or our flowers or whatever you want to call them. Just like that. One mosaic. Well. I'll turn the bits of this out. beginning of a star in there. It should be relatively similar. Both ends. Just like that. The view point. There we go. Bit of a view. And there's the start of one of our prepped billets and our other prepped billet was here and this is our twisted billet and I think it's about four twists at the minute something like that so what we're going to do is frame this now to extend all of this out mosaics and two twists in there. Forge this down square as well. And because we're welding these, I say welding but you know what I mean, four abreast, so this is a multi-bar, so what we've done is taken a laminate and then manipulated the laminate, laminate, laminate even, manipulated that to change its direction and give us the pattern where we want it. Then we turn that into a mosaic because there's four stacked around each other, that makes it a mosaic well. And we've drawn that out and added that to the multi-bars, the breast, it's not connected on this side, 
So that makes it a multibar. It's just so you can follow where we are. Now it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway for those that are going to say something about it. Don't follow the, the exact techniques of how I'm squishing this down because it is plasticine and not steel. In some ways it does convey what's happening and in other ways it doesn't. And because it's plasticine you do have to do a bit more forging on the sides than you would do, which normally would shear things apart. So doing it for the first time, I would imagine by this time you've already had some practice if you get into this stage, but if you haven't don't go blaming this video for showing you bad hammer technique. <laughs> I notice some of the details are a little lost because it is plasticine, but you can see what's happening in the end of there now. I'll also see how much the the uh, striping on the sides from the twists is developed. You have to bear in mind whatever you do, whatever it looks like when it starts off, it's going to expand at the ratio that you've expanded the steel. So what appears to be pretty small in the end of there now is going to stretch out to whatever we do at the same ratio. So you might say, well, you've got a really nice pattern in the end of that bar, but that ain't going to make me a knife. So we're going to look at how you can then get this bit onto this bit. And there's a few ways we could do that. I'm hoping that there's a big enough pillar there to show you more than one. One of them we've already covered. I'm going to try and do a little piece anyway and squish it out so you can see. And that is twisting and that's going to tear that core up from the inside display it on the outsides, especially when we grind through to the inside you're going to see a lot more of it. <clears throat> then we have what's known as the furry flip or the filcinetti flip I believe it's called and we're going to cut it at an angle and then you weld down on them chamfers and that takes your ends and turns it to bring it on the top. Um, there's tiling which realistically no one that's making a blade is ever going to tile a blade out like that so I'm going to leave tiling out of that but that's essentially doing the same as your mosaic but welding it on the flat or in a canister or something like that uh, and you, you're tiling it out in the display that you want and you can then offset them to give you more different patterns but that's uh, a bit more decorative I would think you've got a higher chance of failure with a blade welded like that and so the only other one is what's known as an accordion cut. So I'll start with twist and we'll see if the twist will give you a reasonably good idea. So I'll cut us three billets out of here and then you'll see what they, they are. Three ish. So they're all the same inside, look. You can see that? I haven't really got a good detail light there, I'm afraid. And I'm looking on a small screen, so I don't know how much you're focusing on it. I'm going to say, hopefully, it's focusing on it. But you can see that these are all the same billets. And you can see the other end. They're all exactly the same. Give or take all the way through so what happens next is purely the way that we're going to open this out is going to change what pattern we're going to get so we'll do the one with the highest chance of failure in plasticine form which is the twist because it doesn't really like being twisted too much yeah. with this being a reasonably short billet we may not get as many twists into it as we would like but this is about principle, not about giving you design, it's about understanding. And hopefully by the time you've watched these two little miniature videos, you will have a pretty good understanding. And then you'll be able to look at all these fancy patterns that you see everybody else do and understand 
what they did to get there. Right, one of the things I have learnt with twist is, it's a good idea, before you forge it out to size, get rid of all the rubbish bits that you don't want. And then we're going to grind the outside layer off first before we stretch it out. There's all our waste. And obviously this is a scale, a scale size billet. And you have to work out how much of this you're going to lose. piece of twisted explosion. You can see where the insides have come through. And the stars of the explosion are here, here, here. Now you can see that. As I can see, you can lose some detail, but purely because it's in plasticine. That gives you a pretty good idea. So that's twist. Right. So we shall glue a cardio cut. If you can see the way I've cut them in there, the idea being to try keep this thickness the same all the way through. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. I think you can see that. And then what we're going to do is open it out like we do playing an accordion. Cue some kind of stupid accordion song. In an ideal world, that ain't going to happen obviously. Now what you can see happening in the corners here is what bit me when I first did this one. And if you look, you see it's starting to tear. It's such a sharp cut. So if you're going to do it this way and go for straight cuts, drill the holes for these and it gives you a nice wide radius in the bottom to start with rather than a sharp cut line. Even better than that, or even less stress than that, is to cut it out in triangles and then open it out. And that takes a lot of this stress out of here because you've already created, but you lose more material. So it becomes a personal choice. And we'll see how far we can get with this, but at the end of the day, even plasticine has its limits. So we're about to find out. Also notice as you're forging this down, these outside corners are getting disturbed on both sides. see so you end up with a lot and your tiles don't quite lay out in the same way so you get a lot of it's a replicating pattern but it's more disturbance so you'll notice in there can you notice that i don't know if you can it kind of looks like you may be able to see it. We've got explosion, explosion, explosion. Let me get you a detailed shot of the inside of that, I don't know. Can't quite tell if it'll get you a detailed shot or not. But again, you can see what's happened to the pattern. You can really see that from the sides. Turn the light so you can see. Nice sweeping edge. So there we go. Accordion. Very flip. It's going to be interesting. Another 
cool shot there, look, on the inside of the billet. Cool. So the key when you're doing this one is to remember you get it all the right way. And the easiest way to do that, if I get this correct, to turn that one like that. And you want these two ends to touch and then these two ends to touch and then these two ends to touch. See how we weld these on the 45. Squeeze that in. And then this this way gives you the most detail and the smoothest replication. Is that the word I'm looking for? Replication? Yeah. Multiplication of the, of the pattern? I don't know. Choose what you want. More detail, more symmetry. And all I've done here is very, very, very small tack weld on it. Look at that. That is what you call pretty cool. There you go. Taking the previous simple stuff and looking at how you can multiply it. And to say they're all the same billets, all made from the same thing. And appropriately sized. I would say they're a pretty good idea of just how different you can make the same thing. I'm not sure how much of it's transposed is okay on camera, but you've seen how the principles go together. And like I said before, everybody looks at a piece of steel differently. So if that's helped somebody, then that's all it was meant to do. And I'm quite aware some people will be well and truly lost by this point because they couldn't be bothered to go back and watch the first video. So, Shame on you. Sorted. Do all the likes and the thumbs up and all the other usual YouTubery stuff and we'll see you next time. Look, here we got a dog's tail wagging down here. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs>